as mom goes into labor and she breaks her water, what is happening is the, this part of the chorioallantoic breaks open and allantoic fluid rushes out. So the area of the placenta around this cervical star area ruptures, allantoic fluid exits, and then the, the first thing that one normally sees visible coming out the placenta is the amnion. So at the vulva of the mare, we would commonly see a bit of amnion protruding through. Then over the course of the next few minutes, when more uterine contractions occur, you might see one foot of the foal, then a second foot, then a nose of the foal. As contractions continue to occur, the more of the placenta, more of the amnion comes out with the foal inside. Eventually, mom, mom gives birth. And now we'll take all the, all the amnion out. So m mom gives birth and the amnion is now hanging out of the mare, uh, suspended. Usually we would tie the amnion in a knot up around the hocks of the mare. And the weight of the amnion pulling on the umbilical cord will cause the chorioallantoic to become disrupted from the uh, uterus of the mare. And as this pulls on it, as it, as it exits the mare, it turns inside out. So what happens as the placenta lands on the ground, it's usually inside out relative to what it was inside the mare. So this is the, again, the inside of the placenta, the allantoic surface, the chorionic surface, the velvety brick red membrane, uh, the velvetiness is the microcotyledons, the little Velcro-like attachments that bind to mom's uterus. These are then on the inside. So this is the original placenta again. We've got the amnion, translucent membrane that surrounded the foal, umbilical cord, and then that outer placental membrane, the chorioallantoic. This is a good demonstration of the umbilical cord. This is the part that uh, broke off, was broken off from the navel of the foal when it was born this morning. We can see a couple blood vessels, uh, arteries protruding out through here. This umbilical cord is composed of, of four vessels, two arteries, a vein, and the urachus. And the, the arteries and veins transport blood back and forth from the placenta to the foal for oxygenation and, and nutritional support. And this is the normal length of a umbilical cord on a foal. And you can see that, that there is some normal uh, twisting to the umbilical cord in the, uh, in the normal uh, situation. And you can also see how these blood vessels branch out. Once the, once the blood vessels reach the chorioallantoic, they dramatically branch out into smaller and smaller blood vessels to cover the entire surface of the placenta. This is an example of, of a placenta from a different mare, and this particular one has some, uh, some infectious material uh, around the body of the placenta. Uh, we took a biopsy from the placenta and confirmed that, that this mare did have a bacterial infection of its placenta. The value of looking at a placenta after the mare folds out is to identify problem areas like this mare had with these, these essentially abscessed areas on the placenta. Knowing that these are present, we would do a critical early examination of the foal and this particular foal was placed on antibiotics knowing that, uh, that the, the mare had a, an infection in her placenta. So not only is the placenta valuable for protecting the health of the mare, ensuring that the entire placental pass, if lesions are found in the placenta suggestive of a bacterial infection, those bacteria may be able to work their way inside the placenta to where the foal is in utero, in utero and that foal, because of the placental infection, may have an infection itself while it's still inside the mare. And once it's born, it may be tremendously beneficial for that foal to receive medical therapy, a medical diagnostic workup and medical therapy to optimize the survivability of that foal. We're going to fill this placenta up with, with water. And that way we can see the size of the placenta. You can see some of the surface area that might not be quite as visible if one spreads a placenta on the ground. This is, a, again, a normal placenta from a mare that folded out last night. 
The normal placental exam really doesn't need to include this, but the normal placental exam, it may only take two to three minutes to do an evaluation of the placenta. It's my opinion that every placenta should be evaluated after every foaling to make sure that the, that the placenta is intact, there's no piece missing, and that there's no lesions on the placenta. The examiner should wear disposable gloves, and at the conclusion of the exam, the placenta should be discarded appropriately. Now this mare, uh, we've got the placenta filled with water. We're gonna take the, uh, take the hose out, and now we're gonna describe what happens when a mare, when a mare gives birth. She's going to rupture her chorioallantoas. She's gonna break her water, only this time real water is going to exit. The amnion has started to, to exit. The chorioallantoas is ruptured at the area of the cervical star. Again, in the normal foaling, that would be allantoic fluid that would be exiting to the outside of the mare. And we'll go through the foaling process one more time with uh, the first thing visible outside the mare would normally be amnion, and you, you would see it filled with amniotic fluid. And as this mare gave birth, the amnion would, would pass out of the mare. That is then attached to the umbilical cord, which is attached to the chorioallantoas. As the mare stands and the weight of the amnion pulling against the umbilical cord, that normally would, would pull so that as this is passed, the, the uh, chorioallantoas is passed inside out once it falls outside of the mare. So that's what you would normally see visible uh, behind the mare after she's passed her placenta. Commonly, we would weigh the placenta at the, uh, at the conclusion of this exam. A placenta would weigh about 11% of the foal's body weight. The normal placenta in a quarter horse mare would weigh about eight or nine pounds. If we get a placenta that weighs substantially more than that, 14 or 15 pounds as an example, it would suggest an increase in thickening of the chorioallantoas, which may be an indication of placentitis. So weighing the placenta is yet another way of evaluating the placenta.